Welcome to another episode of Gov 101. I'm Jeff Knowles. I'm Marsha Hampton. And today, we're on location. <laughs> on we're a not, I'm not deck. in a suit and tie. We're on the parking deck. Yeah, unreal. The, the things that I do for City TV. The parking deck. The parking deck. This is uh I'm chewing gum. This is the first parking deck in Douglasville, right? this is coming. I really don't want to talk about, like, just don't say it too often. We're it's going to mess me up. We're three floors up right now. Are you just right going to ignore what I just said? We're three floors up. Marsha has a fear of parking decks. I don't necessarily have a fear of parking decks. I just don't really like anything over my head. I don't want to be this high, and then we're just kind of like moving. The sky. So this, the deck is not complete at this point. It is not. It's close. It's uh, close. All the precast is up for the most part. That requires a crane because What's they, precast? It's the outer portion. Were of you going to explain that to the audience? Because no. they won't know that. No, no, no. I wasn't going to oh, okay. explain that to the audience. The structure's complete. <clears throat> our, our we have a, we have a, a live audience. We have a live audience and a fact checker today <laughs> uh, on, on Gov 101. First time ever. Yes. We've had guests before, but we've never had like a, uh, a, a fact checker. A fact checker, checker who just gives who, us the information. Exactly. We need one of those little things in our ears so we can. Uh, listen no because then it would make it seem way more professional than what we really are maybe maybe but the structure is complete uh we're we're uh we're sitting on top of the deck mm -hmm. uh with the uh, with the major structure uh done okay done uh it, before too long we'll be looking at uh, parking cars in here whatever you say um aren't you excited that no because i will not be utilizing the parking deck i am excited that Folks who visit downtown will be able to utilize the parking deck. I'm excited the fact that I know some of the restaurants have um, given us a little bit of grief. That's you know best word to say about the, the lack of availability of close parking. So uh, this will allow them to park really really close to most of the downtown restaurants. Most of and it, what that means is uh, we're moving right along with the conference That's right. center. That's right. We're almost. Uh, we're, we're not almost done. I was getting ready to say, we're not almost done. Well, it's relative, I guess. Relative to who? Yeah, I guess your lifespan. I don't know. We'll be done with it soon. What? Before Christmas. Maybe. We'll be done with you, it. You shout out dates a lot. You've been known to go to a meeting. Some bottle just flew around. Somebody's littering. It's a little windy up here. But you've been known to shout out dates and it'd be completely off. I never submit a date. Well, I'm I just within... say like a season or like a quarter. Like I've been telling people the parking deck will be ready late spring, early summer. And when I that say May the better. when I say May the fifteenth, I didn't say twenty twelve. No, but you said May the fifteenth. Could have been 2013. Yeah, but people may not be parking May the 15th. No, it may no, be no. June they, 15th. They will not. Uh, we we do have uh, we do have a few delays in the project. Weather being one of them. We have the most beautiful so weather right outside. now. But uh, the first two months of the project, it did nothing but rain. Right. Um, one of the wettest winters we've ever had, uh, barring the uh, flood of 2009. I don't remember that. It was a pretty significant event. Oh, yeah, okay. you do. You couldn't get to work that day. Oh, that's right. I had to go all the way to Carroll. Had to leave. From my house, where Paulding County, I had to go through Carroll County to get here. And you, I don't think you ever made it, did you? I did make it. Oh, okay. It was council meeting night. I made it. Okay. All right. Yeah. That was the day after the flood, though. All right. Still, I couldn't get to work. Okay. On to the conference center. Enough of the parking deck. Parking deck, it is what it is. 300 cars. 300 cars 300 parked cars, on three levels. Free parking downtown across from you really said the. free parking. Is it free parking? It's free parking it's across free from parking. the existing conference center. Uh huh. And where the old parking lot used to be. And we will notify everybody via the city's <clears> website <throat> and city TV and all those great places when it's open. Right. We'll have a ribbon cutting. Are we? Absolutely. No, I think we just need to do just one ribbon cutting. Doing a ribbon cutting for a parking deck is just not. It's a significant event. I'm the party planner. You are, but it's a significant event. Okay, but we're not going to do a ribbon we, cutting for we the We don't parking. have a parking deck. No. Okay. Conference center. Conference center. Where are we at? We're in the parking deck. <laughs> Next could... door to the conference center, uh, I can see it right over there. I think right we need up, to take a break before just we off, start talking just about Just off camera. Center. I can see it just off oh, camera. I think we need to take a break, don't you? I think we should take a break and then we go to that video, the time lapse video, to put in. I like that. Can we do that? Can we do? Our, we've, we're getting a, a, a okay from our uh, from our producers, so uh, we'll take a break and we'll be right back. We're back. For real, welcome, welcome back. Right, we never should film after five again. Well, Just it's quiet. It's quiet. 
It is, but we failed miserably the last time when we like filmed early. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that was bad. And I think this is pretty much that kind of the real, same thing. That was real bad, but. But it is a nice day out and it, it is, is quiet. It is. We don't hear the construction, so this was a great opportunity If for we us were doing this during the day, they wouldn't be able to hear us. All right, what about all that hammering that we've heard last month? What's up with that? There, what hammering? I didn't hear it today. What's up with it? Um, there's a detention vault on the front of the site. Mm -hmm. um, there was a little bit of rock in there. Yeah. And uh, that was the uh, that was the method chosen to remove that rock uh, from that from that uh, area. It was the hammering? Is it over? Uh, that that is that hole. Hmm. We have another hole, but we may or may not use hammering in that. Okay, so for the neighboring businesses that are surrounding us that are currently in straight jackets are pretty much have committed themselves to a sane asylum because they've heard the same knocking over and over again. I can tell them that they're now free? For now. Okay. My expert off camera <clears throat> expert is saying no they're not free. So I will tell them to for continue now. on their mental health medication. Yeah, no, don't don't discontinue no, anything of not. that nature. No, but. because if it has driven you insane like I've heard over the course of time. Some people have been able to ignore it. And it's just become a part of the framework and the environment. Yeah. Some people literally have said they've kind of gone a little batty. Yeah, I, I believe some in City Hall have, have expressed some, oh, something similar to that. those were really the ones I was, yeah, I was no, referring yeah. to. I, I haven't really heard of anybody outside of City Hall <laughs> have that much to say about it, yeah. honestly. And, and I've frequented a few of the businesses down here. and. You know, I think everybody takes it with what it, what it is. I mean, it's yeah. progress. With a, with, a little, with a lot of progress comes a little bit of inconvenience. So if this building was twice as big, we'd have a lot more hammering, is what you're saying? I don't think we could have fit a building twice as big just on asking, this side. Just based on the analogy yeah, that you just hammering, mentioned. Yeah, more hammering, more uh, hammering. And, you know, our off-camera uh, fact checker that I can't see, but you can, mm -hmm. uh, is right. We do have a little bit more rock on the site. Um, by a little bit, I mean a lot. Uh, and I, I don't think we've decided exactly how that's going to be eradicated from this area. Um, you know, they, gotcha. hopefully by the time this films, we'll have that taken care of. But you will let me know so that I can let all the downtown, or Stephanie, I should say, let all the downtown businesses know. Oh yeah, they'll know. Okay. Uh, there, everybody's going to get a everybody's going to get a, a due due warning on that one. More than likely, uh, maybe. I'll say more than likely. You, it's I'm really just you, maybe. You do it to yourself all the time. We may, we may decide to, uh, based on our experience with this rock, which is probably about like Stone Mountain, uh, <laughs> we may, we may use some sort of uh, other technique for for removing the rock, which would include uh, potentially uh, using explosives to. Uh, now, why would you say that on film? So now we have to go on and explain what the use of explosives may mean to the downtown businesses. It really won't mean a lot. It'll be uh, very anticlimactic. You could have just left it at there will be other techniques. There will be other you're techniques. Not, you're not quite certain that that's what we're going to ultimately use. Just prepping everybody. So if worst it, case scenario. Worst case scenario, we'll blow it up. Wow. But it'll be really, I say that, and it'll be very, very anticlimactic. <laughs> Yeah, we're Notice done with it. explosive. What you about won't street? even know what happened. What about street closures? Price S Avenue, Spring Street. Pro Spring will be uh, will we continue to be closed for a while? Uh, you know, we're using it as a staging opportunity. So basically, uh, we're going to say that's just indefinite. Uh, no use. When the pro Spring. yeah, the, when the project's yeah. done, we'll be open that up. Uh, we do have uh, a number of utilities in that area uh, that we've installed, and that's been a lot of the work uh, that, that's caused it to be closed and. And uh, today, uh, they had a crane sitting in the middle of Spring Street. Well, I didn't uh, see that. They took it apart, moved it away. Now it's gone. Um, we can we can walk over there and look at it after the show. Wow. We can peer off the edge of the parking deck. Oh, no, I'll pass. <laughs> uh, what about Price Avenue? Uh, Price is uh, is one lane closed right now, and that's mm -hmm. where the rock's at. Okay. In that lane that's closed. Gotcha. Um, we do have a storm line to put in that will connect to that big hole in the ground that mm -hmm. we were hammering on for so long. Uh, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll continue to work on that. And uh, when we're done, we'll be done. Yeah. Uh, but the steel continues to be erected mm -hmm. on the site. Yep. Uh, you know, I we'll, can see it from here. You can. Mm -hmm. I can see if I turn my head this way. Yeah. See our fact checker too. He's using his iPhone at this point. I think he's maybe checking to make sure that we're 
factual in, in our statements. Or he could simply be ignoring us at this point. Probably. Yeah. He's more like a babysitter today. Yeah, I'm pretty certain. Um, but yeah, we're, we're continuing on the, uh, on the conference center. Um, if, if you're not in the downtown area, I would, I would absolutely suggest you stop. Just drive through. I agree. I mean, if the you, landscape has changed. Yeah, you drive up Price Avenue towards downtown. It's a completely different look. Don't go that way. Well, you can still <laughs> turn. My point is, it's it's completely different, Church. specifically for the neighborhood. Yeah, absolutely. Church Street. I was thinking more Church Street east to west. Well, I mean, yeah, but you can't really get the full effect of how things have really changed unless you come up Bowden and you look to your right, and same way. On um, price. price, looking price. to your left. Yeah, no, it's but you're looking at the back of the building at that right, point. and you but you can actually take um, a look at how massive the structure actually is. It, actually, for me, I didn't even realize how big it would be until it's actually constructed. It's big. Yeah, it's, it's a big, big facility. It how, is. how big is the ballroom? The ballroom itself. I'll ask you some questions now. Are you asking me some questions? Yeah. I don't really know the square footage offhand, but how many people banquet style hold? seating, 560. How about uh, instructional seating? Instructional seating over a thousand classroom over style. Over a thousand yeah. in classroom style. Wow, yeah. that is a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. that, it's divisible by five. Wow. That's right. So for those folks who called the conference center and said, so it's two hundred in each room. Listen to what I'm saying. For those folks who wanted to call the conference center and they called Jennifer and they said, "Hey, I want to have a wedding," and she said, "Oh, I'm sorry, June third is booked up. June, October, great months for brides." Now you actually have an opportunity for, especially a wedding over 150, three opportunities to get that one date. Three opportunities, all right. For those weddings over 150, right now you don't have that. It's just one opportunity, first come, first serve. You're out if you don't get in. Now we have a year in advance. Now you have three. Well, let's talk more about the- uh, And you have two pre-function areas, so you never have to worry about one bride showing you up. Well, you said there's three opportunities and only two pre-function. One is involved with the um, large meeting room because we have auxiliary meeting rooms off the ballroom. Got it. Um, you will be able to utilize that. That bride will not, so you know, quote unquote, have a pre-function area, but she would be able to utilize one of the other auxiliary rooms for her pre-function area. What is pre-function? Pre-function is, you know, when you go to this event and they just kind of want to put you in a holding area before they let you the green unveil. Room? No. Before they let you unveil what the room's going to look like. Before you see the food, we don't want you picking over the food. Oh. You know, we don't want you seeing the setup. So we're going to hold you in this area outside. So you're going to have a pre-function deal. Very similar to when we go to the chamber banquet and we're held out in the vestibule and the, the bars are out there. You can grab yourself for a drink. You can talk with folks, but you actually can't go in the room. That's a pre-function area. Ours will be slightly bigger than what's at the center. So it'll Arbor. hold the thousand or the 500 people it probably won't hold a thousand but it will hold 500. at least in uh, 500 it'll probably hold at least 100 to 150 people in in both areas okay all right yeah. what else does the conference center have full service kitchen wow what does that mean that means that we will have one exclusive caterer the council members just made that decision <clears throat> actually i got a um email concern off of the city's website about the fact that we're going with one exclusive caterer. I did see that. Did you see that? I actually uh, suggested that be forwarded to you. Now can we go to that after break? That's a long detailed discussion. We, we can and, uh, and, and for anybody that's uh, interested in that go to the city website. Yep. Uh, questions and concerns we, we log those right there. Yep. Uh, various topics. It doesn't have to be about the conference center. Yep. If, you're, if you're concerned or see, uh, see something that needs to be fixed uh, send it on. Yes, sir. Just prior to yours was a uh, a dog using the bathroom in somebody's yard. I think we need to go to yeah. break. We'll be right back. Eighteen hundreds. Are I we can back? Make a picture say anything. Are we back? Sure. Okay, we're back. What were we talking about? We catering. Were, we we're talking about catering. That's right. Um, one exclusive caterer. One exclusive caterer. One of the, the Why concern. Is that? Why is that? Listen to my. I'm getting ready to answer it. Don't because, answer before I ask. No, because we had already addressed it, and I was coming back. 
Well, any like any good television show, we have to repeat what we did just before the break. <laughs> any good television show, and we we're in that go, category. We have to go right back to that, <laughs> right. replay that, talk about it again, and make sure we're on board, on board okay. with the, what so, the audience remembers. Just so I understand, we're in that category of good television shows. I've been told. <laughs> How many people? Two. <laughs> awesome. Okay. That doesn't answer, mean there's not more. <laughs> to answer your question, the reason why there is one exclusive caterer, and the concern I got today was uh, two things she addressed. Uh, the, lay, the, um, the person who sent the email mentioned that it was going to cost the taxpayers money yeah. if we had just one uh, caterer. Uh, she also mentioned that it would take away uh, a citizen's right to choose. Right. Um, and, and the way I addressed it, I did mention to her, I, I do understand her concern. Was she in the um, catering business? <laughs> well, not that I can tell from her email uh, whether or not she was in the catering business. Um, however, I did address her concern, number one, when it comes to the cost to taxpayers. Uh, there's not a cost to taxpayers when it comes to the caterer or the facility. Mm -hmm. uh, how we're funding this, pro this project is one, through hotel motel tax dollars. The other is through a rental car tax that we levy from people who rent cars here in the city. Right. Um, there are no property tax dollars that go toward the funding or the operations and of this we're facility. Not, we're not unique in levying tax on rental cars and hotel motel? No. Uh, currently, okay. the existing facility, the way that we were able to retire the debt was through hotel motel tax. Okay. The way that we continue to operate the facility and will do in the future is through hotel motel tax. And other successful cities use this exact same model? Correct. Even okay. if you look at locations like uh, Phillips Arena, Georgia Dome, all of those things utilize a combination, some thereof, of hotel motel tax We dollars. didn't make this up. We didn't. Right. No. This is, this is allowable through uh, this the General is, Assembly. This is reassuring. State. Yes, exactly. So that's question number one about the cost. Um, as it pertains to eliminating the right to choose, she is correct in, in stating that you won't um, any longer have a choice of bringing in your own caterer. However, the way that I address that is we're venturing into new territory when it comes to a convention center, because right. really that's technically what we're building. What we have um, in the existing facility, even though we call it a conference center, it's not a true conference or convention facility. It's a it's, meeting space. It is a meeting space. And, and anywhere that you go, International Convention Center, um, Cobb Energy Center, uh, the, the Northwest Georgia Trade Center, the classic Columbus Trade Center, center the Classic the Center. Classic center. Any any of those conference centers throughout the state of Georgia, they are all, one, funded by hotel motel tax or some type of SPLOS or some type of special uh, tax that's not associated with property tax. And two, when you go there, you have to utilize the house caterer. Um, and the reason for that is because when we build this facility, we're moving into a market of a conference market. That's right. not something that we um, have in the business with the existing facility. And when I say conference market, I'm talking about those trade shows, those conferences that you may go to that are associated with professional organizations. And when you're looking at those folks, they're looking for the house caterer. They right. don't want to have to come <clears throat> to town and choose a caterer. They want to be able to call the facility and have a one-stop shop. It's a totally different type of conference market so um, in order to ensure the success right off the bat from the beginning the elected officials made the decision that we're going to go with one house caterer it's the model that's utilized across the nation I successfully mean, you, across the correct nation. you don't okay. go to any successful conference center that I know of um, where you get to choose your caterer um, you know that's not when you're in the conference market that's just not how it, it's typically works. Some issues with the kitchen if you have multiple people using it, correct? Correct. Currently with the Board of Health, they will not allow multiple caterers to cook in one kitchen. Because then one, no one person is responsible for ensuring that it's clean. That is correct. And that's the most important thing. Correct. And this facility will have a full service kitchen. So that caterer will be responsible for the kitchen. And it also provides a level of um, funding opportunities for the city as well. The one exclusive caterer will have to pay a fee to be exclusive to our facility. And that fee goes to help to retire the debt on the facility as well. As well as market. As well as market the facility. All because right. if you're going to be the house caterer, you're going to want people to come and taste your food. So they're going to get graded like they do at Waffle House? You see it on the wall? Yes, they will get. Awesome. That's right. Where's that going to be at? It's going to be posted. It has to be posted I legally, know that. right? Where? Somewhere along in the vestibule in the back. In the back? Yeah, down the. I want to be up front. I want to know where it's at. Well, that's right behind the front desk. Can we put it right behind the front desk? Maybe. We'll see. Depends on how it looks. I'm all about aesthetics. So it's 99. Are you talking? Oh, you're talking about what kind of frame it's going to be in? Yeah. Not whether or not it's a 99 or a 79. Yeah, oh no, no, we don't want 79. If you get 79, your contract is getting ready to get voided. There you go. Yeah, we don't, we're not going to have any of that.
There you go. So that's that's the deal on the kitchen. And um, I think it's going to be very successful. One of the things we don't want to do, we don't want to be too different. We don't want, you know, when uh, the you American Heart a- Association comes and says, hey, I want my conference in downtown Douglasville. And they're actually in whatever state they're in. And then we have to tell them, oh, well, you need to pick a caterer. Most of these folks are not here to be able to do that. We want to be able to say, here, let me transfer you to the person that's handling the food. And you put together your food package, we take care of the room, um, and provide the awesome and great customer service that we always do here at the city. Great. But for those folks who want to utilize their own caterer, if they want mom and pop and grandma to cook, we have city facilities that they will be able to do that in. Hunter Park at the community center, they will still be allowed to do that. As long as our existing conference center is in operation, they will be able to do that as well. Jesse Davis. Jesse Davis, they can do that. So all of these facilities. Fowler Field. They can do it. It'd just be outside. Right. And there are other facilities that we help to advertise and partner with um, that are in the community. CAC, all those great facilities that are out there, you can bring in your own caterer. So there are huge opportunities for that here in Douglasville. Great. We're not taking away from any of that. So you address that one. And, yes. and I've heard that, I actually heard that question phrased very similarly uh, from a number of different people. So I hope that uh, we can just point them to uh, Gov 101. Correct. And they can get the rundown, they can get their answer. That's and, right. And they can see our smiling faces while, while they're That's right. getting that And the key for everybody to remember that what we're building is completely different from what we currently have. Right. And it is a right. conference center. It is, it's not a meeting hall. Right. And no, no. And, it, and it, if you drive downtown, right. I believe you'll realize that uh, on a scale level, this is completely different. Right. And, uh, you know, today, you're probably only looking at about two thirds of it. Yes. Framed out. Correct. Uh, we, the one piece that's left off today is the uh, auditorium. Yes. Tell me a little bit about, about the auditorium. All right. What's different with the auditorium? What it's not, it's not a performing arts center facility, so it's not a theater. room, it's not a theater. Is it, it floor sloped at all? It is. It seats 150. It is a auditorium, actually 156. In those little fold down chairs? Little fold down? No, they don't fold down. Well the, well, the seat folds up. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, like movie theater chairs. Yes, they will have those. Okay. No tablet arms. But But it, do the arms fold down? Does it have there arms? There are no tablet arms, no. Does it have arms? Yes. Okay. It is meant for lecture t- style seating and presentation. It's not meant for you to be able to come in and have a full scale concert, full scale art performance. Um, it was to satisfy the need of an auditorium type facility in the community um, that's not associated with our schools. One of the right. things you know about our local schools, there are several of them here that have state-of-the-art facilities. Um, and, and I know there's been a question about uh, one of the um, performing art, arts groups, I think it's CAST. Um, they currently cannot perform in certain places in the school because of the content of their plays. Oh. Um, they will be able to utilize our facility, but if, if you're looking for state-of-the-art lighting and sound, that's not what you're gonna get. This is gonna be perfect to host, um, good example, Airway Christian Academy, which is right behind us. If they're looking to do graduation, this is a great location for them to host their graduation. This is a great location. Uh, I believe uh, some of the other schools do the, yes. do the exact same thing uh, and don't have the auditorium space. Right. Uh, to hold I- any number of people. Exactly. Uh, so uh, we, and they oftentimes utilize churches and Correct. other schools, and, and, and that uh, does give everybody the opportunity. Who else is going to use the auditorium? Our city council members are going to use the auditorium. So for those folks who've been to council meetings and you've been in that small room in City Hall, um, now you will be able to, uh, when people come and complain about you, uh, as a department director, now instead of only people maybe like 10 or 15 about, people, people, now we can bring in people don't complain all their about me as brothers, a department director. cousins, relatives, sisters. They don't complain about you. No, no. Was, it wasn't there like one meeting one where meeting. a lady came up and she said, um, I tried I've to been, call Jeff Knowles and he hasn't called me and back. And your face turned red. I hope Jason can pull up that because that was <clears> hilarious. <throat> I'm sorry. That and then, was like and then the I, believe, uh, I believe the mayor told her. Yeah, he's not the person you need to talk to. She'd have actually been talking to Marsha Hampton. But still, you didn't return her phone call. I have since remedied that. You have, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. But that was, you have to admit, that was that pretty one funny. Did, that one did fall through the crack. I do, I do believe we've all had them. We have. <laughs> Maybe not on TV. 
I don't remember turning red. Um, I do did. remember the incident, though. I do. You did. I do. But jokingly, actually, you just got a great compliment. When? You're in your department. You I, did. I did. So I, you do a good job. But that one incident, I'm sorry, was hilarious. I, if we all can only have one, that like Roy McIlroy said, who? The, the golfer from last year after he bombed on the in the Masters. I think most of our audience will probably remember it. I think he hit the Butler cabin with his tee shot. And nobody ever remembers where that's at, but it's nowhere near where he was aiming. And he told the commentator, look, if this is the worst day of my entire life, it's still better than most. Well, I know it wasn't the worst day in your entire life. No, no. And that was only one citizen, no. and she didn't bring anybody, but. We can bring a crowd. We can, but think about it. Your department can bring a crowd. Probably three or four years ago, your department would bring a very large crowd, depending yeah, yeah. upon the issues. Yeah, Specifically, zoning, zoning yes. issues are, are a big hot topic, and, yes. and we do oftentimes fill up and, and exceed capacity. Right. Uh, I, I prefer to remember things like the Pitbull ordinance or things like that. <laughs> that I wasn't necessarily directly involved in, but did bring very large crowds. Right. Where we had media set up, we had uh, television cameras propped up in the chief's lap, I think, at one point. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we, were, uh, we were crammed in there. Uh, we far exceeded the, uh, the fire marshal's recommendation for that room. Exactly. Um, now, how many does the, the courthouse over at the county, how many do they see? I, you know, I'd ha I'd, I'm just guessing, but it's probably close to 150. Okay, so for those folks who've been in, I guess it's Constitution Hall, is that what it's called? Yeah, okay. something, Citizen Hall. Citizen Hall. Citizen Hall. Uh, who've been there, yeah. All right, so that's the conference center. Wow, it's a, it's gonna be a really nice facility. It will be. Uh, we, uh, our, our council and our former mayor, mm -hmm. I believe even our current mayor, and our city manager are adamant about this one feature of this facility. Yes. We could have lost the entire facility, but we had to build this one feature, and that's the clock tower at the corner of Price and Church. Yes. I don't know what else to say about it. I guess it's a symbol of our heritage. <laughs> uh, it has been a, a constant uh, source of controversy uh, for, the, for us, uh, the, the, the uh, owner representatives and the uh, and the design team mm -hmm. and the contractor, uh, we've we've uh, we've had the contractor try to take it out of the project a couple of times. <laughs> it was a great VE item, which is value engineering. We always look for opportunities right. to 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 save money, um, and that's you know one thing we're always doing. And as part of this project, is making sure that we're doing it wisely. Well, I, I think to sum up the importance of the clock tower, if you remember early on when we started the design process, that was one of the first things that was requested, even before right. we started looking at how large the spaces would be, what the interior would look like. It was, we want a signature piece that's associated with the facility, we just don't want a facility. And a, a clock tower was that thing that came up, so we will have one. Beautiful porta cache entry. Yes. Uh, you won't, you can enter the, enter the facility without getting wet. That is correct. It's going to be awesome. Uh, I hope everybody gets a chance to at least uh, come in and be a part of the, the grand opening. Uh, yeah. Because it will be a, a, a wonderful event. It definitely will be. And, and one of the things uh, I, I can say, this will be a facility that the entire community can be proud of. Uh, just with the construction of the new public safety building. I mean, you're talking two great facilities that were constructed by the city. <clears throat> and Jeffrey, by you. I did have a hand in it. I cannot believe it. Two great projects. Two, it were, they are two really great projects. That's right. I'm really proud of them. I That's mean, right. they, they, it couldn't, uh, couldn't happen to a better city. That's right. Two top-notch projects. And um, I encourage everybody to go on the website to look at the interior renderings that we have. We have all the latest updated information. You can keep up with the construction on the website. Um, if you are not in contact with us receiving monthly emails, contact Stephanie Elworth. Her information is on the website. Um, and she will send you monthly updates if you're just interested in where we are on the project. Started off to a kind of a rocky start, but Did we? Uh, well, I think we finished up quite well. Uh, I a, guess. It's another great episode of Gov 101. I'm Jeff Knowles. I'm Marsha Hampton. And we'll see you next time.